The following podcast will guide educators using state pre-post Measure B assessments for Component 5 purposes. Please note the following prior to viewing. First, these directions are only for Measure B pre-post assessments for which quadrant growth tables are available. For the vast majority of Measure B pre-post tests, DOE has quadrant growth tables and districts are required to use them. There are a few assessments for which DOE does not have data, but Brandywine has collected sufficient data to determine typical growth values by quartile. In these cases, BSD quadrant growth tables will be used. There are still a few assessments that neither DOE nor Brandywine have sufficient data on or that have not been administered previously. Educators administering those assessments will be on a proficiency model until enough data is collected to develop quadrant growth tables. It's also important to note that the record tracking form produced as a result of this podcast will be used to calculate and determine Measure B goal attainment results during spring conferences. The record tracking form has been formatted in advance to replicate data across several worksheets and to calculate target met values automatically when spring data is entered. All the needed information can be found on the district website. In the upper right-hand corner of the district homepage, click the Sign In button. If you're a new employee and don't have an account for the district website, please contact the district's public information officer, Alexis Andrianopoulos. Once you're signed in, the system recognizes you as an employee and additional channels appear across the menu bar. Click the Staff Channel button, then double-click the DPASS 2 section. On the left-hand side of the page, look for the Measure B Pre-Post-Test Record Form and double-click. You'll get a pop-up. Go ahead and click Open. A second pop-up will ask for permission. Go ahead and click Allow. An Excel spreadsheet will appear. The first thing we want to do is to save a copy of the spreadsheet. So click File. Select Save As, and then decide whether to save it to your desktop or to your documents. If you saved it to your desktop, remember to save it in your documents when we're all done, so that it's not accessible to any other user on your computer after you log out. Use a name that identifies you as the owner and the content, and save it as an Excel workbook. Click Save. Notice the Excel worksheet has three tabs, pretest, post-test, and verified. Today we're just going to be concerned with the pretest worksheet. Let's complete these two fields. Teacher name, simply go to that field, double click, and put in the class or classes that will be given the assessment. and remember to push save. Our next step is to fill out this little chart on the side. It's got the four quadrants, the score range, and typical growth values. To fill that out, we'll need to go back to the website. So let's just minimize this Excel sheet. Click the Quadrant Growth Tables tab. Here you'll see a list of all the Measure B assessments that we have quadrant growth data for. If DOE has the data, they're listed on the left-hand side. If Brandywine has the data, they're listed on the right-hand side. I'm administering the Grade 6 Science pre-post test, and you can see it listed here on the DOE side. So I'm going to go to this icon for DOE and double-click it. If my test was on the BSD side, I would go here to find the quadrant growth tables. So let's find the quadrant growth table for grade 6 science. It takes me to a link to the DOE site. If I scroll all the way down, I can see subject. I'm going to go to science, assessment name. We're looking for science grade 6. There it is. And grade level, again, grade 6. 
and here I see the sixth grade quadrant growth table from DOE. The information we're looking for can be found right here on the document. Let's take a closer look. The chart tells us the average pretest score and what the average typical growth gain is during the course of the year for students at each quartile range. For example, in the first quartile, with scores from 0 to 5 on the pretest, typical quartile growth for students in the first quartile is 12.8 points. For students in the second quartile, those that scored 6 to 7 points on the pretest, Typical growth is 13.1. For students in the third quartile, who scored from 8 to 10 on the pretest, typical growth is 12.9. And you can see in the last quartile, quartile 4, students who scored anywhere from 11 to 25 points, their typical growth value is 10.6. The next step is to get your student scores out of Performance Plus. Go to the district portal. Go to IMS, double click Performance Plus. Inside Performance Plus, you'll want to go to the lower left corner to find your test results. So I'm going to go to Performance Tracker, click Assessment Scores, then use the Filters drop down to find your test information. Be sure when selecting the series to click pretest. Once you filled out the filters, click Run Report. When the report is finished, your data will appear on the screen in a format similar to this. To extract the student pretest data, look all the way across the sheet to the right-hand side of the screen, and you'll notice a small Excel icon. Double-click this icon to export your data in an Excel spreadsheet. When the spreadsheet is ready, you'll see a link pop up. Double click this link. Click Save on the pop up. After doing so, you'll get a second pop up, letting you know that the download is complete. Go ahead and click Open. You might get an additional pop up asking if the source is trusted. If so, go ahead and click Yes. Finally, the Excel spreadsheet appears. Go ahead and click Enable Editing. Now we have our data from Performance Plus in a usable format. Our next task is to take the data from the Performance Plus spreadsheet and transfer it onto the Record Tracking spreadsheet. It's a pretty easy cut and paste. So let's go to the Performance Plus spreadsheet. I'm going to put my cursor in the cell with the first name, highlight that cell, holding down my left mouse button, drag over because I want to capture the student name and just the numerical score. Still holding the left mouse button down, and I'm going to pull down to capture all of the names and scores on the list. When I'm done, I'm going to let up with my left mouse, put my cursor in the highlighted box, right click, and select Copy. Notice the dancing ants around the sections. That's what's going to be transferred over to our record keeping spreadsheet. So let's move across the page. You can see my first name slot is in B10, so I'm going to put my cursor right into B10. I'm going to left click to highlight that cell, right click, and I'm going to paste values. We no longer need the spreadsheet from Performance Plus, so I'm going to close out of it. And the very next thing I'm going to do is push Save on my spreadsheet. You can see that our spreadsheet started to total the spring target already. Fill out the last two columns, pretest quartile and average growth. We're going to get a little help from Excel. So put your cursor in B9 and drag all the way across through spring target. 
go up to your toolbar and click filter. You'll notice that filters have now been applied to all of these columns. We know that scores ranging from 0 to 5 are all in the first quadrant and they all have typical growth values of 12.8. So let's use these filters to help us fill out that information. I'm going to go to the pretest score, click the filter. Notice they're all checked, so they're all showing on our spreadsheet. I'm going to click the check mark in the Select All box, and then I'm going to click only 1 through 5. I'm going to click 1. Notice there's not a 2 because we didn't have a student who scored a 2 on the pretest. 3, 4, and 5, and that's my first quartile ring, and I'm going to click OK. My spreadsheet now only has the students who scored in the first quartile. So I'm going to put a 1 in that quartile, and I know that that quartile growth was 12.8. Put your cursor back in to the pretest quartile. In the little box in the lower right hand corner of the cell, pull it all the way down and the one will replicate in all the other cells. Let's do the same thing for the average growth of 12.8. Put your cursor on the box in the corner of the cell and drag down. We're now going to go back to the pretest score and undo that filter. Select them all and as you can see, all of our students who scored between a 0 and a 5 have a 1 listed because they scored in the first quartile and their average growth has been recorded as 12.8. The spring target automatically sums their pretest score and their average growth target. So let's do the same thing now for quadrant 2. It's for any student who scored between a 6 and a 7, and the number I need to remember is 13.1 for typical growth. So I'm going back to the pretest score, clicking it, unchecking select all, checking only 6 and 7. So what quartile are they in? They're in the second, and I know the second has 13.1 points of average growth. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight the cell, go to the corner, drag it down, and the same thing for the average growth. I'm going to go to the pretest, select all so I can see all the students, and now we have first and second quartile numbers entered. Let's do third quartile 8 to 10, 12.9. 8 to 10, 8, 9, and 10, and we know that those are in the third quartile, and 12.9 is typical growth. I'm going to do the same thing, drag those all the way down, and as we scan down our list, all students have their pretest data entered, their pretest quartile, average growth for that quartile, and spring target has been calculated. We didn't have any students with a score between 11 and 25. If we did, we would follow the same procedure, listing them as a fourth quartile with typical growth of 10.6. So this completes everything that needs to be done for the pretest record form. I'm going to make sure that I click Save at the top of my spreadsheet, and I also want to make sure that I remember where I saved this. You will be sending a copy of this to your evaluator to use in your fall conference goal setting. And that wraps up everything we need to do for the pretest record form.